1.6 solve linear inequalities. Look at the picture on the bottom right and see if you could write an inequality based on the diagram. As a little hint, notice which side of the seesaw is lighter. So what are linear inequalities? Let's assume that A and B are real numbers. Oh, and do you remember how we wrote that before? A and B are elements of real numbers, okay. And A cannot equal zero. And A does not equal zero. Okay, so given that, there are four different ways we could write a linear inequality. The first is AX plus B is less than zero. And remember, this AX plus B is linear because the power with the X is just a first degree, and that's why it's a line, all right? AX plus B is greater than zero. AX plus B is greater than zero. AX plus B is less than or equal to zero. Uh-huh, I think I got a pattern here. And AX plus B is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we knew that these were equations of lines. Anything in the form y equals ax plus b would be a linear equation, and so now we just made it into an inequality. Okay. What's a compound inequality mean? You take two of these simple inequalities and you join them by either the word and or the word or. Two simple linear inequalities joined. by an and or an or. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So how would we graph x is less than three? Well, x is strictly less than three, so it doesn't include three. We put an open circle, and anything less should be shaded. And just shade the arrow to indicate that it keeps going in that direction x is greater than or equal to negative 2 would be a closed circle on negative 2 because it includes that and anything bigger than that or equal to that would be a solution. So I have just shaded the possible solutions for x is greater than or equal to negative 2. This is one of those compound inequalities and this is basically saying that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 3. Let me write that out. x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 3. That's what this is saying. They're equivalent. Of course, this is easier to say, well, x is between negative 2 and 3. Pretty obvious from there. Inclusive, because we have the less than or equal to sign there and it can be anything in between. So you see how that's an example of and? Because it is greater than or equal to negative two and less than or equal to three. An example with an or would be one like this one where it's saying x is less than or equal to negative three. So let's do that. Less than or equal to negative three or it's greater than two. So I have an open circle there, all right? And so that's an or. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about these and, and more in class also. But you'll see this is an example of an intersection because both statements have to be true. And this one would be an example of a union because either this or that. You have budgeted $66 a month to spend on your yoga classes. The studio charges $22 per month membership plus $5.50 per class. Describe the number of classes you can attend. Okay, what do we know here? We have $66 a month total, $22 per month plus $5.50 per class. So that $22 per month is a flat cost. Even if you don't go to any classes, you've got to pay that $22. So that is your flat cost. $22 per month plus you have to pay per yoga class $5.50. 
Let's say X is the number of yoga classes we attend. Well then, we pay $5.50 per yoga class. And how much do we have? $66. $66, but do we have to spend all $66? Nope, but we can't spend more than that. We can't spend more than that. So that would mean that this is our maximum we can spend. So this amount has got to be less than or equal to the $66 that I've allotted that I can spend, right? All right, so let's get rid of this 22. Just subtract 22 from both sides. 5.5x is less than or equal to 44. Divide both sides by 5.5. And we get that x is less than or equal to? 8. 8. So what does that mean? It means that we can attend a maximum of 8 yoga classes. Remember x was the number of yoga classes. So let's write that. We can attend at most eight yoga classes. That means that we can attend eight yoga classes or less. All right, next example. Oh, this is a fun little comic. So be careful when you're solving inequalities, when you divide or multiply by a negative number, it changes the direction of the inequality sign. And I just want to do a little aside here and explain why this is true. It's true because say that you have negative x is less than or equal to 3. So you're going to probably think the most obvious way to solve this would be divide by negative 1 on both sides. But I'm not going to do that for one moment so I can prove to you this point. Let's instead get the x over on the right first. So I would add x to both sides. I know this seems a little bit silly because now I have 0 is less than or equal to x plus 3. So now let's go ahead and get the 3 over on this side. Minus 3, minus 3. So we have negative 3 is less than or equal to x. In other words, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3, right? Because x was greater than or equal to negative 3. So again, if I went back to my initial problem and I did it the more obvious way by dividing by negative 1 on both sides, I must flip this sign. And this is the reason why, because really we switched the sides of everything, right? So that's the reasoning behind that. So whenever you divide or multiply by a negative number, you're going to change the direction of the inequality sign. Of course, when I just add to both sides or subtract to both sides, I don't have to change the direction because I'm not doing any of that fancy stuff. So if you're solving this nerd love equation, let's just do it out. I know it's written there. Let's just do it out. 9x minus 7i is greater than 3 times 3x minus 7u. The first thing I would do is distribute that 3. So I'm going to leave this left side as is. Minus 21u. Then, so let's get all the i's on the left hand side so this joke makes sense. Let's subtract the 9x from both sides. I haven't done anything fancy yet so I keep the sign as is. 9x minus 9x is 0, so we're left with negative 21u. Let's divide both sides by the negative 7. And because we do divide by the negative, we flip that sign. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So I love you only happens if you remember to Switch that sign when you multiply or divide by a negative. All right, how do we do this? 
So in this problem, we want to get the variable on one side and the numbers on the other. So let's uh, move the negative 6x over and subtract 6x from both sides. So we have negative 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 5. Now, since we just want x's on the left, we'll get rid of the plus 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides. And we now have negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 8. We now want to get rid of the negative 2. And in order to do that, we are dividing by a negative. As soon as we divide by that negative, we want to change that sign before we forget. So we do that right away. And we end up with x is greater than or equal to 4. So we have our closed circle. Anything greater than or equal to 4 is a solution. So what I'm shading here is my solution. Next. Uh, now we're doing a compound inequality. So what we want to do is look at the middle of this compound inequality where the variable is. We want to know what x is between. We don't want to know what 3x plus 5 is between. All right, so, so we, we got to isolate mm -hmm. that x just right. like we would do in any other. So if we subtract 5 from here, we got to subtract 5 from here and subtract 5 from here, right? Correct. Okay. And we now have negative 15 is less than 3x, which is less than or equal to 3. Let's divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Okay, and so we have negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. And the reason I needed to do it to each of these things is because, remember, it was a compound inequality where I had this one and this one. So I've got to do it to each of the equations that I've set up. All right, so this is basically saying that x, oops, and I put a less than or equal to, and I meant to put a less than. So it's between the negative 5, but not including the negative 5 and the 1. All right, so that would be my solution. Now this one's an or, so in an or I just do each equation separately. So here I'm going to add one to both sides. So I have two x is less than or equal to negative six, divide by two, x is less than or equal to negative three, or subtract three from both sides, and I have four x is greater than or equal to four, divide by 4, and I get x is greater than or equal to 1. And that's an or in between. So everything less than or equal to negative 3 or greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1. So I make a closed circle. Now we have a problem with words. In Illinois, the lowest temperature on record is negative 36 degrees Fahrenheit, while the highest is 117 degrees Fahrenheit. Write the range of temperatures as an inequality. So let's do that first. Temperature, we can use the variable T. Okay. And this would be a compound inequality because we know both the lowest the temperature can go and the highest. So T is in between two different numbers. Well, is it including or not? Let's see. Yes, it would be including because the temperature can actually be negative 36. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 117. All right. So that would be our answer. And, you know, always make sure when you're doing these problems, make sure that um, the units are all the same. And since it was in degrees Fahrenheit, I'm safe to say let T be the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and that holds true. All right, now what's the second part? It says... So in the second part of the problem, we're going to write the same inequality, but we are going to change the temperature range into degrees Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. So we're going to plug the negative 36 in 
to the equation. So we're going to just make this mm -hmm. into Celsius mm -hmm. and this into Celsius. Okay, so negative 36 degrees Fahrenheit is what in degrees Celsius? Five it, ninths mm -hmm. times negative 36 minus 32, which is equal to? Negative 37.778 degrees Celsius and then 117 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be 5 ninths times 117 minus 32 which equals 47.222 okay and now when I set it up I can't use my same letter T because I've already said that that T was my temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So we better think of a different letter. What letter do you want to use? We can use C for let's Celsius. Use C. So let's say that that is the temperature in degrees Celsius. And so my inequality now is going to read negative 37.778 is less than or equal to C, which is less than or equal to 47.222. Okay? And that's it for this lesson. Bye.